Drummers I Like podcast, episode number 20. Hey drummers, the contest featuring a signed drum head from Jay Postones and Tesseract is now live. Just visit drummersilike.net and follow the three easy steps. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. This is episode number 20, and I am your host, Richard Ducat. I'm coming in from Santa Monica, the drummers I like headquarters, as usual. And on the other line is my co-host, Kevin Charlelli, coming in from Barrow Beach, Florida. What's up, man? Kevin Charlelli, coming coming at you from the East Coast. Yes, Not I said it right that time. You did. You said my name right. He said the full name, and he said it right, so... What is today? Today is uh, uh, October 15th. Richard said Kevin's name right. All right. It's on the calendar. After like 13 years of knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably something like that. Absolutely. It's been that long, but like 10 years, right? Well, I mean, absolutely. I mean, shoot, it was, I mean, at least, nine, it was before Nadia was born. She's nine. So we're talking at least nine years. Oh, phone's making noises. Oh, better turn that stuff off. Can't have an interrupt in the podcast. You always have that fucking cell phone on. Well, I just turned it off, see? So I don't have it on. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm pretty excited uh, about today, man. See that? You went right into it for me. I was just going to ask, what what, what are we doing on the podcast today, Richard? Oh, so I don't walk all over you again. (laughs) We are, uh, we're bringing on a pretty interesting guest, uh, uh. A big, a big, uh, I, w- I would call him a, a big name in drumming right now, and uh, he's playing for the band Issues. His name's Josh Manuel, and you know what? Five years ago, this guy was just jamming on YouTube, and I was blinking my eyes and watching videos, and I turned my head left, I turned my head right, and he's in the biggest, one of the biggest bands easily on, on, on you know, on the scene right now, Issues, and... Um, He's killing it. He's amazing, amazing player. I I just can't believe how quickly he's progressed, and you know he's he's up there with some of the some of the better drummers I've seen in a while now. And uh, dude, I could talk about him all day. I'm just so excited because you know not only is you know he's a sick drummer, but from what I've seen and what I hear, he's an awesome guy. So I think it's gonna be a great chat. I think it's gonna be really cool hearing his story and you know getting his point of view on the whole the whole you know fame thing because he's big now. He's a big name, household name. For sure. That's, that's, absolutely. I've definitely seen some of his stuff out there, and uh, I think it'll be a fun chat. You know, he does he does a lot. He stays busy. I know he's got some other things in the fire that we're going to talk about. You know, don't want to don't want to spoil anything that might be on the podcast. But uh, right, right. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a great show. Yep, definitely, definitely. He's oh, he's so sick. So you know what? Maybe uh, before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that. Uh, you can find us on social media, facebook.com forward slash drummers I like, and on Twitter and Instagram, it's at drummers I like. I'm so excited. We just hit 4K on our Instagram page, and uh, you know, for all you guys out there working it, you know how hard it is to build those numbers and uh, the time it takes. So, you know, big shout out to all our new followers and everybody that's been coming over and checking us out. We're super excited, and uh, we just can't wait to keep delivering awesome content, everything for drummers, only drummers. We're just stoked. So thank you, everybody. And, um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Very stoked. I mean, you know, it's it's been awesome, too, because everybody's done a great job of tagging us and, you know, sending us messages, you know, just showing us clips of, of their playing and just continue to do that. We want to see more of that. Right. So keep tagging us, at drummers I like, hashtag drummers I like, whatever funky insignia you want to put in front of it, drummers I like, drummers I like. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 just surreal seeing the drummers I like hashtag like everywhere now. It's nuts. Oh, so <laughs> we just gotta keep we just gotta keep up the work, man. Everybody, like just like you said, anybody that's keeping up with their own social media knows that it's a lot of work. So 
good job to the team, as you said, and we'll just keep it up. Yeah, and uh, if you're listening on your iTunes podcast app right now or your Google Play or Stitcher, give us a pause right now and go leave a review. Let us know what you think about the show. Give us your critiques. If you love it or hate it, we want to know. We want to know what we can do better and what you guys want to hear. And then make sure you hit the sidebar on our website and subscribe to the newsletter because we're going to drop some serious contests soon, and the people on the newsletter will be the first to find out. So get to it. What do you think, Kevin? You want to get this thing started? I think it's about that time. I'm uh, anxious to talk to Josh. What do you think? Yeah, man, I am too. So uh, without further ado, Josh Manuel. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Today is a freaking special day because... Not only do we have on an amazing drummer, but we have on probably one of the hardest working drummers I've seen in a while. I'm talking about Josh Manuel from Issues. He is currently playing for SJC Drums, Vic Firth, Zildjian, and Vradom Shoes. Dude, it is an honor to be talking with you today. I cannot wait to hear about you, dude. How are you? Dude, I'm great, man. Uh, thank you all for having me on the show. Stoked. That's good. No problem, man. So... Every episode of the Drummers I Like podcast kind of goes the same way. We love to learn about you. We love to hear about your backstory, you know, how you found music, how you found drums, how you led to, you know, where you are today, you know, being with this band and, you know, at the level you're playing. And no one knows better than you. So if you wouldn't mind kind of giving us a breakdown from the beginning. Yeah, of course, dude. Uh, so um, both of my parents were or are musicians. Uh, so... Uh, dad was a youth pastor, so I grew up in church. So, like, literally, r- pretty much right out of the womb, uh, I was pretty much playing. Um, I think I got my first kit when I was two. And it was one of those, you know, like, Toys R Us, like, little kick drum with, like, the center symbol that's, like, made out of plastic or something. I don't know. <laughs> my son um, has that kit right yeah, now. Uh, yeah, my, yeah, my daughter had that... one, too, when she was younger. <laughs> I know that exact kit. Yeah, they're the most annoying sounding drums. But, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, that was kind of like, that was uh, at least how my family was. And um, mom sings and plays classical guitar, and dad sings and plays guitar, too. Um, cool. So just pretty much right out of the gate, like, I was really drawn to drums. Um, and being around the church a lot, there were um, a lot of really good drummers that would just kind of, like, take me under their wing um, pretty much like the whole course of me growing up um from you know really young until probably i mean i still play at church every or you know every sunday when i'm home uh so it's it's something that's honestly really shaped like who i am as a as a musician and as like a person obviously uh but yeah man like um kept doing the church thing and just trying to learn as much as i could because uh you know like i said i was lucky to have like some honestly really killer drummers that like cared enough to be like um hey man you know you can hold a groove or whatever but you know if you hold the stick this way or if you hit a snare drum this way it sounds better you know what i mean like yeah they were those just... little little tips almost not like not like giving you full-blown lessons but just coming by sharing a little bit of knowledge helping yeah, you along the path yeah pro tip um and yeah exactly and i did i think when i was like four my mom enrolled me in in lessons and I was just like, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't care enough, not about drums. Like I loved playing drums, but um, I didn't like the reading part. Um, sure. Yeah. So it's just as a younger kid. And then um, I, most of what, you know, most of like how I was taught, like I said, was through church and just basically hanging out with people. Um, and then once I was like 12 or 13, I had like regular lessons uh, from a guy named Christian Pascal. Um, and he played, I don't know if you're familiar with like David Crowder, um, in the Christian music world, but now he, he, I think he's with another country artist. Uh, but anyway, he was like one of the dudes who like really like influenced my playing, uh, you know, early on. Sure. Um, but you know, years go by, I keep jamming, doing my thing and high school rolls around and like, I basically start, I'm in a really small high school and I kind of like helped start a drum line, I guess. Um, and so we, we got lucky and had a dude named Kyle who did, who was involved with like DCI stuff. 
Um, uh-huh. And he he was like our instructor, and uh, he was very strict on the stuff, which was great because I I hadn't had anyone who was like who would really crack down like that. Um, yeah. so, at any time, anything with marching band at all really has it. it it's cracking down. I mean, that's, oh, that's, it's dude. pretty regimented. I mean, it's like you're doing this wrong, and I mean, it's it, it's straightforward. Yeah, so exactly. I, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it was it was cool because. Um, I up until that point I hadn't really been challenged to like as as much as he challenged me. Um so I definitely that was like another I guess growing point for me. Um but I mean honestly the reason I marched was cuz I loved playing drums, you know, like drum set and that was the closest thing I could do in high school. <laughs> um, cuz I lived yeah. in kind of like a smaller town. Um so you know the, I did that for a while and it it really uh it definitely helped my hands and like um you know, just, I guess, technique as far as, you know, uh, double strokes, single strokes, like, I, and, and during this whole, during this whole point, and this is so, this is still, like, embarrassing for me to admit, but, uh, during this whole point of drumline, like, I still, like, like, could kind of read, I was kind of, like, doing the Nick Cannon thing, <laughs> or, you know, like, <laughs> where I would, like, learn the cadence, um, and then just, you know, play it by memory, until, like, I remember, like a couple months into it, Kyle, our instructor, was like, kind of caught on to what I was doing. I was like, "All right, so like we'll we'll play this cadence, but we're gonna start on bar 46." <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, yeah. So basically, got caught. Um, but yeah, dude, I did I did marching. Um, then as I, I went on, I you know did the local band thing um, for a bit. Um, kept playing worship stuff and gospel stuff. Um, like I said, you know that's always been like big influence for me. Sure. Um, and then, well, growing up in church, that makes sense. You know, yeah. not to not to not to kind of cut you off, but I just wanted to kind of step back and, and say one thing. Um, where are you from? Where Where is your hometown? Uh, Atlanta. I've been here okay. my whole life. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Um, just not like I said. Continue. I just you were mentioned about your hometown and stuff, and I said, yeah, I, I'm not sure where Josh is from. So. Oh yeah, 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 man. Uh, I I live I've lived like 35 minutes outside of downtown Atlanta for pretty much my whole life. Okay. Uh, I got you. Yeah. So you're a southeast guy. I can relate. <laughs> dude, yeah, yeah. I love it here. And uh, it's funny because, like, you know, growing up, I think everyone's like, "Yeah, I want to." You know, when you're a teenager, like, I can't wait to get out of here, or whatever. And like, the more I had the opportunity to travel, and like, you know, get to see the world or whatever, the more I realized I was like, "Dude, I love Atlanta. Like, I, I don't think I'll ever leave." But uh, that's cool. Cool. Yeah, I mean, do you guys want me to go at, get, like keep going into like how I got the gig with issues and all that? Or oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I kind of almost kind of stepped on you in there. You no, know, no, dude, there about that, but you're totally um, good. Yeah, where were you? you were just at. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess doing high, local yeah. band stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and then yeah, where, I guess where did it go from local band stuff? I mean, you know, uh, age wise, I guess what were you were kind of just out of high school through that? Yeah, man, I was. I think I was about eighteen, nineteen, um, okay. and I was. You know, still playing in a worship band, still playing in, in a local band called uh, Dear Madison. And we really just wanted to be Mayday Parade, like, really, really bad. <laughs> um, and that was kind of that vibe. And we did that for a while. Um, and then I ended up kind of focusing more on college for a few years and gearing, like, all my focus towards studio work um, with a buddy of mine. And I was going to Georgia State University uh, for film, actually. Um, and basically we, we kind of worked, we built the studio out of like, you know, my mom's room and then until, you know, a couple of years down the line, I'm, uh, like, I guess a junior in college where, you know, we have our own house and we had built the studio out of the basement. Oh. Um, and then that was kind of how I was able to get through college was doing the studio stuff. Um, nice. so yeah, you that just was do, fun. just doing sessions and just putting, you know, being able to throw money in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. And, cool. you know, with, with technology nowadays, it's sick because we literally just, you know, did it out of our basement and I would do, you know, sessions with him four or five days out of the week and then go to school two days. Um, and I hate it school during the whole thing. But uh, oh, sure. it's like it all got in the way of the playing, right? You're like, oh, come on. Yeah. I got, I got stuff to do back, back at the studio. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you know. yeah, it, I don't know. I, and I was going for film, which was my way of just like, all right, well, if I'm going to go to college, I at least would do something I am interested in. Um, but anyway, that, that led to like, uh, meeting the guys from issues. Um, 
the, our vocalist Tyler needed some video work done on some of his like solo stuff. Um, and I just hit him up on Twitter and shot him my like video reel or whatever. Um, and then we did a couple so, of videos so you, together. You, you met him through, through your video work. Yeah. And we were all in the same area. Like, um, cool. we have two vocalists in issues and Michael and Tyler both lived like in the same area. Like we had played local bands together. So we all kind of knew the same people. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of how we got plugged, plugged in with, with each other. And then, uh, me and Brian, the guy that I ran the studio with, ended up doing, like, Issues was doing, like, an acoustic thing at the time, and they wanted to do a video and audio, and we were like, yeah, we'll do it. Um, and <laughs> randomly, at the studio one day, me and, like, after they left, uh, me and my buddy were like, hey, I have this idea for their song. And so, like, basically, we saved the session and then just kind of opened another one and just kind of, like, did what we thought. And then the next day, they came through, and I was like, yo, like, I had these ideas, and I kind of played on your song. Like, if you don't like it, that's cool. Uh, yeah. but you know, here it is. And then they ended up really digging it and yada, yada, uh, a couple, I guess, a couple months down the line. Um, it ended up, they were in need of a drummer and, uh, I got offered the spot. So that's kind of a very, I guess, a short version of, you know, how everything got linked together like that. I got, I got to just say for the listeners, that's a great example of, you know, you were just kind of doing your local thing, you know what I mean? Like I said, you knew them and it all worked out, but. I mean, you just took the initiative to be like, you know, you heard what you wanted to hear in the song, and you're like, I'm just going to do this, and I'm just going to give it to them, and you yeah, know, yeah. ultimately that ends up leading to you getting a gig with them, and you know, it's something as simple as just doing a playthrough of somebody else's song, really. Yeah, exactly, so, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very um, cool. but Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much like, you know, the, the, the short version of kind of how, I guess I grew up playing drums and got the gig and all that, and then... uh. You know, I've been with them now for, gosh, well, that was, it's been three, four years now, coming up on four years, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah one, of, one of our guys, Tyler, said uh, he remembers specifically watching you before you were even in issues on YouTube all the time. He, he'd mentioned an Attack Attack cover that he saw you play. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I just cannot believe that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I feel like it was just yesterday. So, you know, three or four years, even though it feels like a long time, man, that, that is like a blink of an eye. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a long time. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the older yeah, we get, the, the quicker it feels. <laughs> Dude, yeah, exactly. Exactly. How old are you, Josh? I'm um, 25 now. 25. So you got picked up when you were 22? Yep. That's right. Yeah. I just turned 22. I thought it was interesting, too. You'd said that, um, you know, after doing all that touring, you'd realize that you love being, you know, at home and um, yeah definitely I, I you know when i when i when my wife got pregnant and we had our kid i had stopped touring but i was i was out with icy stars for a while i was doing stuff with versa emerge and i had realized really quickly on the road that i you know i don't i live in la now so it, it's not exactly spot but my hometown vero beach where kevin is now is easily my favorite place to be i would love to live there and i plan to go back one day and live there but i i i i, I totally get that whole touring thing you know you when you see it firsthand on the road, it's really easy to love where you're from. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Home is always home, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's, for sure. I mean, a lot of, uh, but you know, what's funny is you always get those people that like hate on their hometowns constantly, that live there. Like, yeah. you know, we get it here. I'm sure Richard can attest to it, especially in our area. My you know, and they, oh, it's such a little area. There's nothing going on. There's no reason to be here. And it's like, What's so wrong with here? You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's kind of like paradise, you know, it's on the beach, you know, and it's not like super busy here. So it's not like, you know, if you really want to relax, it's, you know, it's not like chaotic, like going to Fort Lauderdale or Miami or yeah, you know, or, sure. Orlando is not coastal, Tampa's busy, you know, so. And you're a hot it's Atlanta, man. Yeah. 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 You got the you got the masquerade out there, right? That's the venue. That's the big one. Dude, yeah. Yeah, man. That's the one I grew up playing. And they're, I think they're finally tearing it down they've been saying that for like four years but see and that was affiliated with the masquerade also in in ybor city in tampa oh was i it think really? it's like I, under, I think they were both under the same ownership or something at one point but now it's i mean it's still there but i think it's called the ritz ybor they've changed it okay so, gotcha. yeah things are uh but I, I i think they're they were interlinked at one time but I could remember playing the Masquerade in, in Ybor City years ago, playing like a thrash metal band and thinking, oh, this is so cool, like Slayer played on this stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've so, only yeah, done was... two of the three floors, though. 
I've never done. I think it's the top, top, top floor. I haven't been on. Yeah, they have. Uh, they have like Purgatory, which is the smaller kind of like bar room, uh, and then they have Hell, which is like 600 cap. Uh, that that room is actually really cool because people kind of stand all around the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which is sick. And then there's Heaven, which is upstairs, and that, I think that's like 1200 uh, cap. But I think I've done uh, Heaven and Hell. I haven't done Purgatory. Yeah, Pur- literally Purgatory is just like a, a bar, basically. Uh, but it is cool. Yeah, that is cool. It's a yeah. cool setup. Yeah, honestly, the first time we, like, uh, gosh, I think it was like the third time we played there, third or fourth time I had played there. Um, we It was like one of the headliners we did, and we had sold it out. And I remember that, to me, was just like, oh, yeah, like that's cool. still is, like, I don't know, yeah, it was just the, one of the most, like, surreal things. Just because, you know, you grow up, like, I... Like, I, I see, I got married six months ago, and me and my wife, Emily, like, have known each other for 10 years, and literally, we went to the masquerade, like, almost every weekend in high school, you know, so just, like, <laughs> being able to, just all of that at, at one time was, it was super overwhelming, but yeah, it was honestly so cool. Yeah, absolutely, it is, that is, that is a cool feeling, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like everybody strives for, like, that festival feeling, where it's like, you know, you look out and you just see the absolute sea of heads, like, nobody yeah, will yeah. ever know how they handle that until, like, you're sitting up there and, and experience something like that, but. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely the same kind of idea. So the, uh, that studio you and your buddy started in, uh, college, is that, is that now, I mean, say it right, Century <laughs> Studios? Um, yeah, me and him actually don't work together, we, just because of all the traveling and stuff, um, sure. I just think it got super hectic, like, travel, you know, we were traveling, because he runs, uh, front of house for issues, actually, um, oh, cool. so it got super hectic, just, like, traveling, you know, eight, nine months out of the year, and then coming home, like, right into, like, a full length or something, it just, uh, got crazy, so, um, I actually work out of a studio now, which is, like, North Atlanta, called Hewlett Studios, um, with a guy named Lane Johnson. Oh, cool. Very cool. Barney. Yeah. Everett, no Barney right now, buddy. I'm doing the first <laughs> <laughs> Everett's like, I want to talk. I want to talk. <laughs> you want to say hi? Doctor. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hello. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, Ev. <laughs> say hi. He's literally kissing. Ooh, like, Calder. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> So, so what I'm really curious about, uh, let me get him real quick. Oh, you're good, you're good. <laughs> See, Josh, you've started the path. You, you said you're married now, so. Yeah, yeah, we are we have a dog, so. That's, okay, that, okay. That's it currently as far as. <laughs> it's not very It's like the different. primer, that's like the primer. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I, we have a little oh. border collie that we got coming on a year, and uh, you know what, I have a two and a half year old, and I have a one year old dog, and sometimes I don't know who's worse. I don't, know who's more, I don't know who's causing more mischief and who is not listening more. But um, yeah, dog is a good step. I'd 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 I'd, I'd let that ride out a couple years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're you know, like I said, we've known each other, or we we went to the same youth group in high school. So literally, we've known each other like nine or ten years at this point. Um, so we're definitely just we're taking it easy. You know, probably Doing won't. Your thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't no no plans for kids at least uh, for the next couple years or so. That's awesome, man. And y- y- you know what? I'm uh, I'm kind of curious because, you know, getting more into the studio playing, you've been doing all this touring, and, and over the last couple months, maybe I'm wrong on timing here, but I've really started to see these samples that you've been doing, your drum samples. Yeah, yeah. I am dying to know, you know, you know how that sprouted up, the process, and, you know, it seems like something that's just not that easy to do. You know, I'm, I'm curious about the journey and, and, you know, where you're at with that right now. Yeah, man. Uh, well, basically, like, I've always been super nerdy about, like, hit, how you hit drums and how you, how they sound. Like, literally just how drums sound. I, like, I'm super nerdy about that. Um, so that just kind of translated into samples after a while. Like, the idea of, because um, I know, you know, nowadays there's, like, a lot of bands that just will use demos to pre-pro or producers who, like, don't have a spot to track drums so you know they'll they'll program drums or or whatever you know that's you know drum samples are just like you know kind of a a widely used 
like commodity, I guess, between like producers and stuff. So definitely, uh, I mean, even even in even in the amateur realm, I mean, you know, even when I do stuff just for my, you know, I play in a local band here. When I do stuff, um, a lot of the times, you know, I go from from v, v drums into uh, you know into superior drummer, dude, and yeah. just for doing pre production or just getting ideas down or whatever. So, you know, and in those, you know, trying to put samples over that to you know at least make it sound a little less MIDI like. <laughs> dude, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and that's that's kind of where I started working with Lane Johnson uh, up at Hewlett Studios because he. Um, God, he's what 30 now and he's he interned under matt goldman for like a long time and you know goldman's based out of atlanta he did um a bunch of the under oath records um uh, a lot you know a lot of those tooth and nail bands um uh-huh. and dude does you know he was kind of the like king of of drum sounds for a long time um yeah. uh probably still is honestly but yeah <laughs> uh and you know lane just learned a whole lot from him um, and I, and I always had been friends with Lane. Um, and then whenever we started working together, I kind of had, I had always had this idea of like, you know, wanting to do, I guess, my own samples. Um, and then, uh, whenever we got together, I just kind of pitched it to him and, uh, we really just like spent some time. Um, cause he's probably the best, like, uh, person I've ever met that like knows how to tune a kit. Ah, yeah. Um, the so, elusive art of tuning. Dude, yeah. <laughs> like, when, when I'm on the road, I use that uh, Evans, like, torque key, where you can just, like, set the dial, and it makes all the tensions the same. See, I've never, I've never used a torque key. I've never used a torque key. The, I mean, oh. to be honest, I mean, I would always you kind of just do the tap method and just kind of listen yep. to the timber, you know, you know, of each spot near the lug. And uh, the only thing I've really ever messed with that's, like, a tool for that is the drum dial, too. I've used that, you know, to measure yeah. the tension of that. And that's, you know, that's worked pretty good because it does what it's supposed to do. It measures the tension of the head. But I've yeah. never messed with the, with the torque key. So you've had good luck with it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty much the same concept as, like, the yeah. drum dial. Um, but, I mean, it's for me, it's, like, a really good starting point, you know. It's yep. not always perfect, but, like... Yeah, it's not the end-all, be-all. You're going to find tunes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean... You know, basically, he's great at tuning, um, and he, he just, like, his, I think what he's best at is making drums sound really, really natural, um, and also, you know, really huge. Um, so, we just did a sample pack together, and then now we just kind of have, we've been putting them out recently. Um, so, now we have two up. Uh, I have them actually online at joshmanualdrums.com, um, and there's some videos, you know, of, of like you can hear the samples. There's like a me playing an issue song with an electric kit, and then just like the acoustic drums in the studio, you can hear everything. Okay, um, cool. That's very yeah, cool. yeah, man, I and, love uh, it. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely link to some stuff too in the in the show notes, so awesome. so you listeners can just click and uh, and find it. But uh, now, when you did those samples with your SJC drums, and you kind of you you got you along with him created the sounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, man. I mean, me and him kind of sit there and. We'll like fine tune everything, and I kind of have like um, what I have in mind for each different pack. Because I mean, obviously, you don't if you're you know if we're selling multiple you know drum sample packs for different kits, you don't want them all to sound the same. Um, so I mean, and another thing I try to do with this is make it um, very versatile. So you know, if if there's a really beginner producer who's just looking for drums to kind of drag and drop into a mix and sound good, you know, there's there's they're there and then if you're you know a guy who's been working in the studio forever and you know you just want to be able to manipulate raw drums the raw you know all the raw sounds are there as well yeah, um yeah, definitely. yeah so we just tried to give everybody everything um and an- another problem i've always had with like electric kits i guess is like uh none of the ghost notes ever pick up correctly you know they just yeah, sound like it sounds like really tough. quiet rim shots or you know whatever yeah uh, although so, although the newest the newest Roland V drums I don't know, they just they, they just released uh, I mean it's just been within the last month or so I'm not sure if you've seen but it's actually got this setup where you can actually put put the trigger on like a 22 inch bass drum shell uh, itself so the bass drum looks look like a big bass drum but it's still it's still triggering but I know uh, they're 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 cool. snare I think they've done some pretty uh, pretty interesting tech updates to try and bridge that gap but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it just yeah. doesn't. It just doesn't sound natural at all when they do trigger. You know what I mean? You can you definitely hear the electronic kit when you yep. do get some ghosts in there. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, with that being the way it is, we just try to include as many velocities as possible. Sure. But, uh, so and yeah. you're just sitting in there hitting. I mean, you're hitting yourself at different velocities, right? 
Yeah, basically, like, from, like, tapping to just, like, jumping off the seat and smashing the snare as hard as I can, <laughs> you, know, you know, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. the only way to do that, to be able to get all those velocities in there, as anybody knows that's sat and tried to tweak those those samples before. And uh, the secret sometimes is in manipulating those those velocities, you know, like, like we would actually hit, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's good to have that whole range, and it's neat to know the whole process of kind of everything, too, because that's a heck of a process. <laughs> Yeah, it really is, honestly. But yeah, but it's cool. I mean, you know, you've definitely created something neat out of it. So, very oh, cool. Thanks. You know, being a t- a guy that respects tuning, you must be a guy that uh, is a, is at least uh, pretty into gear itself too. Because I mean, how else are you going to get your your good sounds without good gear? So yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, I was just going to say, you know, let I'd, I'd like to kind of know a little bit more about your personal setup itself. You know, the kind of from the top down. You know, hear about what what your symbol selection and, uh, and position is, is, and, uh, kind of what your drum setup is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so symbols are all Zildjian and, uh, I actually switched recently after we did warp this summer, I switched to pretty much all K's. Um, so I'm playing those, the K light crashes, uh, 19 and 20. And then I have a dark, uh, K custom ride and it's a 22. Um, and then I actually just grabbed a 20-inch Crash of Doom, which has now become my favorite symbol. <laughs> well, the name um, itself is just is awesome anyways, the Crash dude, of Doom. Yeah, it's it's honestly, it's so sick. Uh, and then uh, for China, I have an 18-inch Oriental China. I think I've literally played that symbol since I was like 12. Um, but uh, then I have, I have um, this stack that's a 14-inch Mini China with a 10-inch um, FX Splash layered Uh on top of it um and then lastly i have uh like a hi-hat stack on my right and it's basically just k light hats on the bottom and it's 16 inch and then the top is uh, like an effects hat basically with some holes in it okay where they've been drilled yeah i've seen yeah yeah setups like that that's cool yeah yeah that and then uh oh normal hi-hats are 15 inch k lights okay i love the way this sounds so much yes they're they're incredible yeah, I've got, I've got the I've got the fifteen, uh, uh, just straight up Zildjian new beats, and I love oh, those those symbols are nice too. Oh, I've always been a new beat player. <laughs> I had a pair of new beats that got stolen from me. I'm mad to this day. Oh, uh, I will find you. Eve, <laughs> hate a thief, hate a thief. <laughs> you know, I I'd cut you off, Kevin, earlier, but what? I, and I don't want to jump too far backwards, but you know, get back into the samples. What what I did, what I had a question though is, so I'm always playing. I have a TD11 KV. And gotcha. I'm yeah. always playing electronic, just be, you know, the two year old that just kind of required. And I do a lot of filming, <laughs> and I jump from Superior to the Logic kits. And after playing Superior, Superior Drummer plugged in for a while. I just kind of got I, I don't want to you know bash, but I just got sick of it. I don't I don't I'm not exactly a big fan of how everything sounds, and I don't I'm not a drummer that has a lot of time to go in and fidget with yeah, yeah. tuning the drums. So if yeah. I were to grab your sample pack, would that plug in to my Roland kit? Uh, yeah, I actually have a rolling kit here that I use. Uh, I've, I just have a TD-12, um, and all I use is I, I run it through Logic, and I actually use battery to trigger everything. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's in, like, there's a video I have up uh, of me playing Coma, actually, uh, which is one of the songs off our new record, and um, probably one of the more simple tracks just so you can actually hear, like, you know, all the drums and whatnot. But, um, yeah, sure. dude, I'm... And- and that's your kind of feature in your samples too, because it's, exactly. it's your samples that we're hearing on the video. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Exactly. Very cool. Yeah, I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. <laughs> I'm gonna find out. But um, yeah, because I, I'm 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 very much looking to diversify my kit, and like I said, I'm just don't have enough time to go in and fidget with the settings. You know, I have barely enough time to tune my real drums. So you know, I'm, I'm yep. really looking. I'm really <laughs> looking for that sweet spot with with the. Uh, with the playing so are there any tutorials on setting that up or i'm sure i can find some stuff around um we don't have any um but i'm sure there yeah youtube has a million um it's honestly it's really really simple cool. um, at least with cool. with battery but uh i mean that's just and i use that on the road as well you know i have uh, I have my drum tech clayton who's awesome and he, he'll like set up my electric kit and you know just plug it into the computer basically so like in a green room if i you know, want to jam or just, you know, write ideas or whatever. It's, it's there. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Love it. Absolutely. Very cool. 
So, you know, we were kind of still in that in that gear conversation. Uh, I think we covered all your symbols. Let's kind of hear hear how the old acoustic setup is. Got you. Uh, yeah, I, so I play SJC. Um, I've been with them for seven years now, actually. Um, love those dudes, and they've always taken really good care of me. Um, and I'm, I currently have two kits from them. Uh, one of them is just a really standard, like, studio maple kit. Um, it's a 22 kick. 12 inch rack and 16 floor um and then uh i have a snare i have two snares from them actually um one is a really really old maple snare that they made um that i actually bought used from jake from mayday parade or actually through the line of him like way i got it from some random dude in texas actually but uh <laughs> but it was his snare from a long time ago okay. um and then i have another snare that they actually just gave me as a wedding gift um and it's a Calvin and Hobbes like wood burned snare drum with like all my favorite strips on it, and uh, that is, I feel like I feel like I've seen a picture of that. Dude, it's incredible. You've you've posted you've posted that, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, sure yeah, you must have. Oh yeah, yeah it's, it's I, I feel awesome. like I've seen that. So that's, yeah, it's that's great. that sounds bad. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's dude, it's incredible. Um, and that's that's mahogany with maple re rings. Ah, oh, mahogany. Um, there's yeah. there's something you done. There's a wood you don't hear about too much very often. I mean, all the all the old vintage jazz kits are mahogany. I mean, a yeah. lot of them were. Yeah, but, really. Uh, that's really like cool. The actual actually the new kit I'm doing with them, um, which is going to be based off like our new records, like album art or whatever, um, is going to be a, a maple or mahogany with maple re ring. So same thing, kind of. Okay. okay. Nice. That's cool. I mean, they SJC does such cool stuff we've we've um, you know had a few guys on that that play sjc and yeah i mean richard and i have definitely seen them all through the years and uh they just make they make a beautiful looking kit and just anything they put out always looks nice dude yeah they really do honestly do a great job great i'm a big fan i'm a big fan of mike i'm a big fan of their business too um you know i I saw them on uh the profit (laughs) that yeah yeah mona show and i mean it's really cool to be on TV, a eh? but to you know allow yourself to be so vulnerable and really get deep into your world, it gave me kind of a new respect for not only Mike and the team, but the, the brand essentially on its own. You know, they're they're really willing yep. to do what it takes to provide a good product. And li- I now know in my heart, none of those guys are there for a profit at all. They're literally there to provide a good drum set and music for people. Like it's it's yeah. so cool. Really Definitely, cool. exactly. Very cool. But, uh, <clears throat> cut, cut. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's when I'm about to go. You pop right. <laughs> Everett's like, my turn to talk. So here's what I want to talk about. <laughs> I want to know how to play drums like Josh Manuel. That's what he's saying. <laughs> that's see. There you go. <laughs> when do I get lessons? <laughs> okay, buddy. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. No, you're right. good, man. No worries. <laughs> like i've told richard before too this the i have a nine-year-old daughter so i've been through his younger stage where he's at now and it's like what's bad is when you're like you know driving in the car all by yourself and you start singing the barney songs to yourself <laughs> you're like i mean because you know they, they make them catchy and you're like oh this is bad <laughs> yeah yeah you know, or any other loop like, together or clean up and start playing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> That's the song of the house one right day, now. One man. day. That's getting in the clean. <laughs> if it works, it works. True. So, uh, so Richard, why don't you kind of lead into, into into our next topic? I think we covered everything in, uh, in the drum setup department. Yeah, you know what? I was I. I'm pretty clear on all the other stuff. What I would what I want to talk about a little bit before we get into our rapid singles around is is kind of what's going on with issues. The future, you know what's what's going on with the writing. I know you guys didn't put you could, you put you put a record out not too long ago, so I'm, I'm not sure where you're at with with the, with the next record. What's going on with the band touring? You know, any any cool news? Anything that anything you want to talk about? Yeah, man. Uh, so we put out a new record called Headspace in May, I believe, um, and then we did Warp Tour this summer, which was awesome. Um, and uh, then we kind of we pretty much been out all year, um, so we took, let's see what three months, three or four months off, um, and then we've been pretty much hanging out, you know, just doing our thing, 
uh, like I said, I got married in May, so really the, this is the first like time I've even been able to be home and like, you know, be a husband and just kind of be a hang out, human. enjoy being home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, sure. Which has been great. Um, but we go, so we're going, we're playing Not Fest in Japan um, in the first week of November, which is Bruh. I'm really stoked for. That's gonna be really cool. All the way to Japan. Have you have you guys played that before? Yeah, we've uh, we've been there twice actually, and um, we love it there. Um, I was just gonna say, actually, anybody I've ever known that goes there is just like, oh, I love it there. <laughs> dude, yeah, it's it's great. It like it's so it's so funny because the first time we went, um, it, we so we did Warp Tour in 2014, and then we had w- literally one day off, um, and then we did like another month and a half of like all international dates, um, oh, oh. which was awesome, but just like at the end of Warp Tour, we were just. Yeah, you're, you're done. I mean, in all yeah. through summer, hot shows. I mean, exactly. uh, outside. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> it, dude. It was it was rough, and then yeah. Japan was like the very end of that run. Um, so the first time we were there, basically, we just didn't get to enjoy it, um, just because we were just so tired. Um, yeah, but the, right. dude, Exhausting. the second time, yeah, exactly. But the the second time we went, we got to really like hang out, you know, go eat, you know, some sushi or whatever, um, and we pretty much fell in love. Um, so this time we're going in, I think the show's like November 5th, um, and like all of us are just going to stay there for a week after the show, just to <laughs> yeah, kind of hang cool. out. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the perks of being a touring drummer, you know, all all you young guys aspiring to do it, then, you know, keep working because, you know, you'll be able to say that, you know, oh, I'm going to go to Japan, I'm going to stay for an extra week and, you know, just enjoy it and take it in. You know? <laughs> yeah, honestly, man, I'm I'm so yeah. stoked about it. Um, sure. But uh, let's see. After after that, I think we're uh, it. Nothing's been announced yet, but we have some really cool things lined up, like uh, a tour that I'm really stoked about lined up in January or well January ish. There's no dates yet, but um, uh, that's as far as the future. That's kind of what we got going on uh, for now, at least. You can't cool. even tell us who's what the tour is yet. Well, it's not like it's not set well, in stone. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. You never know how these things work, you know? You know the yeah. show business. The music <laughs> business, I should say. But I am really stoked about it. That's all, I guess cool. that's all I can say, yeah. Well, ho- hopefully, it'll be, hopefully it'll be something, you know, North American that comes to, you know, both Florida and to Los Angeles, so that way we can both, you know, catch up with you. <laughs> exactly. You, there's probably a good chance of that being the case, I guess. <laughs> yeah. we'll keep our fingers crossed and and we'll yeah. we'll just you know we'll make sure that uh when we do know for sure we'll update everybody so there you go that's uh that's, the that's a good thing to keep on not seeing la <laughs> 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 well you know yeah for you it's see sometimes for us in florida i mean sometimes we get kind of we get we get shafted because there's a lot of tours that won't just won't dip down here at all yeah, you yeah, know, for if sure. It's, if if they if they're not if they're not going to have the guaranteed pull that that you know that they know they're going to get in some of the bigger cities, then they just don't even bother taking that trek down uh, down our way. So yeah. So although Richard doesn't have to worry about that in L.A. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a show like every night. I I'm actually frustrated because I missed the big Hollywood drum show last week, and I'm, I'm okay. like five miles from it, and it was everybody was there. <laughs> Yeah, Everybody, yeah. Stanley Randolph, <laughs> man, the oh, the Kings, some awesome. good drummers, some good drummers. But um, yeah, man, it's been it's been really cool to really get to know you and learn a lot a lot about you. But yeah, before before we peer too far into the uh, second or the second second half hour of the show, I, I'd love to get into our our lightning round, our rapid singles. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So for anybody who hasn't listened to the show before, our lightning round is a quick set of questions kind of geared to uh give you the listeners a little knowledge and value from this episode and kind of kind of get inside the head of josh and get an idea of how he got to where he is kind of by answering some of these questions on his journey himself so let's get this thing started you ready josh yeah let's do it cool man so uh question one what was holding you back from becoming a successful drummer what was that leap you had to take to kind of jump over to that, to that next side. Mm, uh, I think I, I still do it, but I think I was just I would get in my own head a lot. Um, like, so for example, when when issues first offered me the gig, I was mm-hmm. like, "Yo, like you know this is sick," but I, I don't think I'm your guy. Um, like I listen to heavy music, but 
the extent of like my double bass work pretty much was like 16th note, you know, normal stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I feel you. And so I was just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not your guy. I'm not like a metal dude. Like I love heavy music, but I don't know. And then uh, basically one of like one of my best friends was just like, yo, honestly, if you don't take this gig, you're literally just scared. Like you're just a coward because you can do it. And if there's parts you can't play, then just figure it out. Yeah, you'll you'll learn it. You know what I mean? Yeah, Come yeah. On, <laughs> uh, well, you know, so, it's fun. It's funny that I mean, self doubt would be a good way to say that. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something that I suffer from. It's some. I mean, I don't know if you keep up with Mike Johnston, but jo- Mike Johnston always talks about it. it's always something he's suffered from. It's always something, even to this day, that he has to keep in check, and he's le- had to learn how to keep in check. Yeah. Because definitely. it could be it could be detrimental. I mean, it's a super important thing for especially for a lot of you know you younger drummers out there. Yeah, so absolutely. Self doubt yeah. is bad. You know, you want to have, you want to have critique. You want to have, you want to be able to look at what you're doing and know what you need to work on or what you need to get better at. But you, you, you just can't beat yourself up or hold yourself back with it. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. And just, that's an awesome answer. That's, I mean, that's that's one of the first. I think that's the first time we've had that that brought up on there. And that's 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 definitely something that a lot of drummers deal with. Yeah, definitely, dude. So very yeah, good. So, awesome. Yeah, great, great answer. So, um, next question. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Mm. Uh, the drumming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, somebody said uh, great men do things before they're ready. Like, and this kind of ties into the last question, I guess, for me. Um, it, in that, that was like one of the dudes who I grew up learning from. And basically just like, you know, I never really felt like I was ready to go for these gigs or, you know, whatever. Um, but basically just putting yourself out there and like, yeah. if you fail, you fail and you're going to fail sometimes and that's fine. Just like, make sure you learn from those mistakes, I guess. Um, exactly. Yeah. Take the leap. Don't be, don't be afraid to take that leap, you know, exactly. just out there. And do it. I mean, like you say, what's the worst they can say is, oh, you know, you're not quite the right fit for us, you know, and like you say, they may even offer you some, some advice, you know, albeit constructive criticism, but the other important part of that too is knowing how to take that criticism. Dude, yes. And, you know, exactly. don't let it be destructive to you, and and make sure you you know you consider what somebody maybe uh, throws at you. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, if you're not around dudes who are like actively challenging you as a, you know as a person and as a musician, then um, you know you may not be in the right spot because I think that's really important. Um, and you know, I'm lucky enough to have have the dudes around me that I do who are you know crazy musicians and just we all kind of are always challenging each other so uh yeah that's that's super important yeah that's i mean two two great answers so far we're two for two here these are these are (laughs) awesome all all of our listeners definitely need to be paying attention here (laughs) i've always been a big fan of trial by fire too so i really like. yeah well it steps it steps you up sometimes it really steps you up sometimes you don't realize you have it in you until like you're sitting there and you're like uh I don't have any choice now. I'm sitting here. Yeah, dude, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, honestly, it's terrifying. Like, it yeah, for sure it is. is. It's uh, terrifying. <laughs> but, you know, there's kind of only one way to get better, and that's just to throw yourself out there. And yeah. you just got to go for it. Definitely important stuff. Definitely. Yeah, great answer, man. So, uh, question three. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? Mm. And I, this is relating to drumming, I, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay, maybe, cool. I guess uh, we should put that blanket, like that blanket statement, down at the beginning of the lightning round. But yeah, just gotcha. think of it. So it's all related to drumming. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. I think um, for me, and this is something I've done since I was really, really little, is is jamming to stuff I like, uh, like rather if if it's like R and B or if it's you know hip hop or if it's like heavy stuff, whatever it is. Uh, basically just jamming like when i was young i would jam, I would jam to the space jam space jam soundtrack okay. um, like and i you know doing that um and listening to what the drummer's playing and also you know learning what he's doing but then like going and creating your own parts um sure. so like when i'm home now you know i i make sure to take time out of every day when i play to like literally just jam and experiment and like try new ideas and new elements within you know the context of songs yeah um, songs that you that you already like and enjoy listening to anyway so it's easy for you to sit down and and have yeah. a good time because you're enjoying listening to it anyways yeah exactly so, and, and for me yeah. that kind of keeps me 
I mean, I'm obsessed with drumming. Uh, but like, <laughs> but like, it keeps me, it keeps me focused, and it keeps me like on track as far as like, you know, always trying, trying new new ideas and new concepts, and like making sure I'm, all, you know, trying to always step my game up. I guess. Absolutely, uh, and don't worry. So are we. We are obsessed with drums too. So we, we understand <laughs> the feeling. We yeah, are obsessed. Yeah. It is an obsession. It's an addiction. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's it's yeah, a good absolutely. one to have, though. It's one of the best. You know, one of the best. Yeah, to have. exactly. You know, it's not destructive exactly. or anything. Well, you know, <laughs> except for some of my gear, maybe. But <laughs> you know, that's about it. But um, let's see. Uh, Rick, Rick, I guess uh, I guess we're we're burning through these good. I guess we're on to our yeah. next question. Getting better every episode, man. You guys are. <laughs> You drummers, you. I just don't know what it is about these questions, but you just get them right every time. Yeah, they're they're kind of open-ended to make sure that they always get them right. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, uh, question four. Share a resource or a tool that helps you survive as a drummer. Uh, for a long time, it was um, this practice kit that I had. Uh, and now, now I, like I said, you know, I've kind of upgraded to that electronic kit but for the longest time i had this like little gibraltar practice kit that has a kick pad and like four pads and it's like one sure. big thing you can just like tuck away and you know store um i think, I think dw a, sells a similar product too and same yep. kind of idea it's like the beater hits like right in the center post of the stand exactly. and then just like they branch off from there for pads you can kind of get a yeah, primitive it, setup going exactly that that thing has saved my life uh just because like if we're out uh, like when I when I first joined the band, it was summertime, and we had you know we were writing a self-titled record, um, and we pretty much were writing it. Majority of it, we were writing on Warp Tour, um, and so you know when you're when you're on tour and writing, like that thing is a lifesaver, especially since we were going right into the studio after that. Um, yeah. I was able to kind of at least work through some parts, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you that, can be creative or at least use your imagination, I mean, that can be extremely helpful. I mean, when you're, you know, playing shows just about every day, it's like when you have the time to write and, like you say, shed those parts before you have to go sit there and go, okay, now you're using studio time. So. Yep, yep <laughs> exactly. Uh, and if I can answer this in two parts, that, yeah, that yeah, would be absolutely. sick. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other part is like YouTube. Oddly enough, because oh, Sam, there it is, there it is. Almost every that is yeah. that is a very common answer for number four. Dude. And, okay, but like sell. such a good one. Such <laughs> a good one. <laughs> we have to think about it. Like we, as a generation, we're we have this like tool that really nobody's really had before. Like you want to learn how to do anything? There's like some dude in his mom's basement, his mom's basement, like telling you how to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, YouTube is <laughs> YouTube is is sick, man. It's great, and like the fact that I can watch you know, literally my favorite drummers of all time sit there and, like, whether if it's an interview or them, like, showing, you know, Phil ideas or whatever it is, like, you, you know, you we have all this access to that, and I think that's so cool, like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. just, 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 uh, like, you know, over the last couple of days, I think Friday, I didn't have no work. I was, I was kind of doing some stuff and hanging out, and, uh, you know, I go on there and search, uh, you know how to make a how to make a cheap router table. You know to do because I'm really obsessed with wanting to customize and mess with drums. Uh -huh. You know, actually like doing stuff. You know, by hand. Yeah, yeah, cool. So uh, you know, I, I, let's 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 see if they have anything good. It's like you know the first one that pops up like under ten bucks. And this guy shows you you know how to build a router table. I mean, it's you know that easy. It's just boom. You just you can follow his instructions and uh, for less than ten dollars and in about <laughs> an hour you'll have a routing table. <laughs> Dude, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, like you said, you can find anything you're looking for there. Yeah, it's great. So, that's great. Yep, that's a great answer. Yeah, I, I also love the first part because I, I I'm, don't, don't correct me if I'm wrong here, Kevin, but that's the first time someone has mentioned a, a practice pad or a practice yeah, kit. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a number absolutely. one resource? Um, I it's, find and that... it's great. I mean, you know, like, just like you said, I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're, when you're touring like that, are you going to take your drums out and set them up? And I mean, you can't do that. It's just not that's an option. Me. Right, but yeah, that's like no the number you, you you mentioned. That's the num that is the number one resource for every drummer that outside of their drum set is their is their practice pad, and I, and that's yeah. just a great it's just a great answer. And of course, the YouTube once again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So let's get on to question number five. Recommend just if you could recommend just one book, what would it be and why? Stick control. No, oh, great answer. Yep, George Lawrence Stone. That is the book. <laughs> Damn, Stick control. 
immediate yeah. response. I like it. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. think about it. It just came right out. <laughs> and like a lot of That's people awesome. that go through stick control, uh, me included, when I, you know, when I was like really starting to work through it when I was younger, uh, they don't think about how you can apply everything in the entire book to your feet. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that like really helped me is just like, you know, spending. I was, I was just going to ask you, how do you creatively use the book? Cause that's, yeah. that's just it. I mean, every, you know, I've seen so many, like even through the years to get modern drummer and like, you see so many people, you know, reference like when they're doing like little lesson blurbs or something about how, Oh, this exercise is really just, you know, this, this, you know, this example of this on George Lawrence son, and we're going to play this here and this there and this here, yeah. you know, and then just totally exactly. create something new out of it. It's, it's so great. It's such a great book. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like syncop- syncopation too. I, I have, I, you know, I, I mess with that from time to time. Yeah. Definitely. I, need to, I, need, I need to get stick control though. I don't have a copy of it right now. So great. I got a PDF I'll me. send you buddy. Oh, you better. <laughs> you better. So on to our final question it's the uh it's the dreaded question of rapid singles today. <laughs> it, it throws everyone for a loop and um i think yeah. i think i think it really gets the most genuine and best answer possible so i'm gonna i'm gonna lay it on you josh cool so imagine you woke up tomorrow you're in a world exactly like ours you have all the talent the skill the knowledge that you have now but you know nobody you're Life in issues is non-existent. You're a complete nobody. No one knows who you are. But here's what you have. You have $500. You have your smartphone. And you have a drum set with a means to get around. So you have a way to get to gigs, to play shows, to get places. Your food, your board, all that stuff is covered. What would you do first to get back out on the scene and, you know, inevitably get to the level you're at right now? Dude, I would make a YouTube video every single day of just (laughs) covering whatever the most popular songs are. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, that is, that's a question. Uh, Yeah, dude, I I think, okay, so if I have a smartphone, I can at least upload decent quality stuff to YouTube through my phone. Uh, So wait, does the $500 include a kit? Like, do I have to buy a kit? No, you already have, you have like 500 bucks cash, you got a kit, you got a phone, you know, you're good to go there. Yeah, you're not would... worried about food. You're not worried about you know living somewhere. You've got that all covered. You know it's not even okay. in the equation, kind of. Yeah, I mean that would be my first steps to get, I guess, get back out there. That and I'd I'd be using Instagram too. Okay. Yeah. Like that. So, so you just dive right in, just yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> for for us, it feels that way because I mean you know like anytime we're on, I mean that's what we're we're either you know looking at other drummer stuff, you know posting yep. something drummer related. Yep. Uh, commenting on something to another drummer, so I think for us it really feels like it's it's drum drumogram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I do cool. love what what it's done for uh, for people though. It's really changed. It's really changed the game yeah. for drummers for sure. Yeah, Just honestly, it's really cool. It's cool that it, you know it used to be you know with YouTube you have to spend you know a good time you know a good amount of time learning a whole song, recording a video, making sure the audio doesn't suck, you know whatever. And now you know. If I'm jamming to a song, I'm like, oh, this is a cool idea. Literally, 30 seconds, there you go. You know what I mean? It's just like, right. it's a very rapid rapid fire way to show, like, whatever you're working on, you know, what ideas you have and all that. I think it's cool. Another good tool I, for drummers. Another good tool. Yeah, def- definitely. Definitely a good tool. You know, and I think it's important to, to, to you know, let our viewers know, too, because I suffer from this, too, and Richard, can, can, he, he harps on me all the time, too, but, you know, like, all I got is my smartphone, and it's like, that's that's plenty of, you know, I mean, if you can get it something that at least has, you know, a little bit of a decent quality, it doesn't have to oh, yeah, sound, yeah. you're in a studio, you know, but yeah. if you could just get something and be able to put something out there, I mean, you know, you never know. Dude, literally, man, you can go to Walmart and you can grab one of those uh, blue microphones that are like $100. I think they're like a snow. Oh, the, no, no, they're coat. they're 50 <laughs> That's what That's what we're recording with right now, actually. Okay, yeah, that, it's yeah. great. It's sick. Yeah, uh, they're great. They're awesome. They're, the snowball, they're the round one. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I, just I plugs right in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that thing, dude, that's it's fifty dollars now. That's that's sick. You you grab that. Uh, you grab if you have a Mac, then you have GarageBand. If you don't, you grab Audacity, and there you go. You have like, a, you know, just make sure your drums sound decent, and you have a room mic that'll pick up natural drum sounds, and there you go. You have good enough quality to, you know, yeah, do your thing. It's at least going to be enough, good enough to you know to put put yourself out there. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay, wait. So in this in this scenario, I would probably buy. I'd spend like fifty bucks on the mic. So which means I have like four hundred and fifty dollars left, right? Sure. Um, I'd probably buy a TV and an Xbox One. <laughs> <laughs> God, Honestly. That is Honestly. perfect. If I have money left, I mean. So you're a gamer too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So you know, it's like I can't get through. Uh, you know, I can't get through without having to have my release, which I can, I can attest Dude. to. I'm a PlayStation guy myself. But, okay, got you, got you. But absolutely, absolutely, cool. cool. That's you that's and no, nobody's ever mentioned that before. So that's a pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty cool way to do that. Be like, oh, I got money left over because I got this all figured out. So I'm gonna get a TV and I'm gonna get some uh, some Xbox action. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Great answers. I mean, that was an excellent run through through uh, rapid singles. That was that was awesome. I think there's a there's a lot of value in there for for all you listeners out there. And uh, take the advice. You know, all these episodes we do this with everybody. They're the same questions. Everybody gets to put their two cents in. So take all that good advice that comes from these guys that are doing their thing and apply it to yourself. Yeah, Josh will tell you. He knows. <laughs> I I agree, man. Every and ever everyone's answers have always been completely different, and I I just feel like I wouldn't say they they get better, but every time you hear a new answer, for me, it feels like I just got the I got the keys to another car or something like that. I, I don't know. I I, I they're just they're really helpful, man. And, and you know, your yours yours Josh stand out on their own too. And um, oh, thanks, man. Our listeners can really get a lot out of this. Really, you know, <clears throat> definitely. They will, and they will. So, that uh, that kind of brings us to the end, Josh. We've uh, we've learned a lot about you today. I'm really excited to know that, you know, you've 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 not only made it pretty far, but your journey wasn't it wasn't like a simple one. It was very hard. You put a lot of work into it. You know, you really you really put in you really put in the efforts and 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 uh, time that it takes to get to the level you're at. You know, it wasn't like you were just posting videos online and you got picked up. There's a big story behind your playing. There's a big story behind, you know, you. And you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just glad I got to know you more today. I know Kevin is too, and so are all the other listeners here at Germans I like. So, you know, before we, uh, before we end this bad boy, I would love to give you some space to not only, you know, shout out friends, family, followers, anybody you want, but let everyone know where we can find you. Let everyone know how we can book a lesson with you, and you know how they can find Josh Manuel for anything they might need. Awesome, dude. Well, yeah, first off, thanks to both of y'all for having me on, dude. This has been cool. Um, let's see. All, all my social media stuff is, I think Instagram is Josh Manuel. Twitter is, is the same. Uh, I have, like, a Facebook page that's Josh Manuel Drums. Um, and if you're interested in the samples, it's joshmanueldrums.com. Um, let's see what else. Um, lessons. I do... Um, when we do tours, I do I do lessons because uh, I just I like to do them in person, um, mm-hmm. and we basically just do it before doors open, um, and you know now I have that electronic kit, so it's it's usually a really cool format. Oh, yeah, um, that's true. And I try you to don't really have you don't have to break out the practice pad kit. You can actually yeah. get the electronics out. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so all you listeners, you hear it. Not only are you not going to have to, you know, you can get a you can get a lesson with Josh Manuel, but you're going to be able to do it on a V or you know on an electronic kit at least. Yep, exactly, exactly. Very cool. Um, very. But yeah, man, I think I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll be, like I said, we'll be out in January ish. So look out for that. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Awesome, man. Well, thanks again. Thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll have we will have links to everything in the show notes, including how we can get a hold of those samples because. I'm going to get on that like after this and I'll be playing them tonight. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> awesome. That's I'm really cool. excited. All right, Josh, Rich, make sure, make, make sure you, you know, next time we podcast, you have to let everybody know how that, how that worked out. Cause I'm kind of curious, uh, what you think yeah. there too. Yeah. How yeah. that process went for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm all about ease of use. I love, I love simplicity. I love to be able to load things up and just get going, especially with, uh, being a dad and all that. So, Let's see how it goes, Josh. I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be plugging it, and I know it's gonna sound great. So, there's your answer yeah, for man. that one already. But everybody, <laughs> <laughs> cool man. Well, uh, thanks again, and dude, you have a great night. Dude, awesome. You guys too. See y'all yeah, soon. Thanks again. Have a great night. All right, Josh, yeah. Take care. See y'all.
Well, there you have it, everybody. That was Josh Manuel from Issues, and that was quite the show. I really hope you guys picked something up from that. Josh is full of great knowledge, and if you haven't checked out his samples, check them out ASAP. They'll be in the show notes below. And before we cut this short, I just want to remind everybody that the contest featuring a free drumhead from Jay and Tesseract signed, actually, from Jay and Tesseract is now live. It's really simple. Drummersilike.net forward slash win. It's three simple steps. My dog could do it. It's awesome. And follow us on social media. It's at Drummers I Like on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook.com forward slash Drummers I Like. Also, make sure you search us out on YouTube. We have tons of content going up every day. As well as our blog, we are pumping out more content than ever. So give us a follow, give us a subscribe, and go check out that contest. I'm telling you, it's so easy to win, and that prize is awesome. All right, everybody, have a great night.